Hey, it's Jason Rogers here, and in this video, I want to talk to you real quickly about what to do when you're asked the tough question in a negotiation. In the world I'm in, usually the tough question I'm asked is, what are your sources of capital? How much money do you have ready to deploy to buy my business? This is what owners and certainly what brokers or realtors want to know when you're talking about buying their business. They want to know, hey, are you an individual that can perform? Are you an individual that has the money to make this thing happen? I was asked this very question today, just 20 or 30 minutes ago in a negotiation. And the reality of the situation is I personally do not have anywhere near the net worth to finance the types of deals that I'm negotiating. However, I have built the sources of capital within my network to virtually finance any deal as long as it meets certain qualifications. In the specific story in which I'm sharing with you right now, we're talking about an asset that has, and by an asset I mean a business, that has pros and cons. There are certain things about the business that are very favorable. For example, it cash flows extremely well. However, there are other things about the business that are less favorable. For example, it's in a small town. And the big employer within the town is the only real employer within that small town. And I'm in a sector of real estate. So naturally, you are always reluctant when one huge business is the complete life and blood of that, of that town. And so what I did when I was asked these tough questions of, hey, where are your sources of capital? Hey, how much capital do you have ready to invest? I said, hey, let me be really frank about something. We have plenty of sources of capital ready to deploy. What I can tell you is it all comes down to the details because they were asking me, how much money do you have to deploy? And I said, that is a loaded question I can't answer because not all deals are the same. If this is an institutional grade deal, I could probably fundraise 10 or $20 million. But for an asset like this, that's a different animal because a lot of the investors that would put in 100 grand, 200 grand, 300 grand potentially for an institutional grade deal will not put in any money for a C level or a, a B minus or a, a C level deal. And so what you're doing there is one, you're stating the facts. You're not overstating, never lie. This is one of the most powerful things you have in negotiation and in persuasion is never lying. If I had told these individuals, oh yes, we have $5 million in asset, in, in capital, you know, 5 million in cash sitting in a bank account somewhere. That would have been a lie. And what they would have done if they were savvy, and this group actually was pretty savvy, is they would have said, hey, great. Would you send over uh, proof of funds? Fax us over a proof of funds. What do you do then? The answer is you don't. You, you just blew up that deal. And so this is the power of always being honest. I didn't tell them that we have $5 million in capital sitting in a bank account because we don't. Rather, we have connections to lots and lots and lots of sources of capital who are very keen to invest in this industry. But some of those investors only want an investment like this, whereas others are interested in a more wide-ranging set of investments. In your case, your, your asset is not going to appeal to all the investors out there. And likewise, it's not going to appeal to all the banks out there. And I start going through all the red flags that make this a less financeable deal. And so see what I did right there is I flipped the script from them saying, hey, where's your source of financing? To me saying, how many individuals are really even keen to finance this deal? Right? I flipped it from, hey, you know, they're saying, you young guy, hey, young guy, where's all your money? I say, hey, you know, it's going to be a hell of a time for me to fundraise this. There's not that many individuals that are super keen to invest in an asset just like what you have. And I happen to know that because I've done the work. And this is one of the most powerful things you can have at the negotiation table is knowing everything there is to know about the deal, about the industry, about the competitors, about everything, about what lenders like, about what lenders don't like. And of course, this goes way beyond this specific type of a negotiation. The more you know about the other side and about all the variables associated with a negotiation you're about to enter, the more powerful you will be. Because people will ask you all types of questions where when you go a little further down that line of questioning, you realize that they're based on a moot point. That other side didn't have the leverage for them to say, hey, where's your million dollars cash sitting in a bank account ready to deploy to buy this? You know, the return around question is how many individuals, even if they did have a million dollars, would want to invest in this? 
Now, the truth is it's a pretty good asset, so I'm not just completely throwing them under the bridge, but it's a two-way street, and this is the power of negotiation. Never lose sight of your internal power as the buyer side or on the sell side, right? It doesn't matter if you're on buy side or sell side. It doesn't matter if you're interviewing or the interviewee. You always have some power at the table. Make sure you harness it, and at the same time, make sure that you never get shaken when people try to crack your frame. Right, And of course, it's a lot easier to not get cracked when you've done the work. If they had asked me, hey, Jason, what's your ability to, to perform and finance a deal like this? Had I not done tons and tons of work in the past, putting together hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of potential lenders and investors of every description to finance deals, then when they had asked that question, I would have either had to have lied or I would have bra uh, broken and cracked. Right? You don't want to lie, obviously. And of course, you don't want to crack because if you crack, the deal just cracked wide open and not in a good way. The deal's done. The opportunity is down the, down the toilet. And so you have to be ready for the moment. And you know what? I can't give you tips on how to be ready for the moment other than to say, you better know everything about what you're about to negotiate on and you better have all your ducks in a row ahead of time. The fact that I'm very, I'm very capable of articulating all the reasons why we're ready to buy your business. We have operations ready to go. We have the financing ready to go. We understand what we're buying, the goods, the bads, and the uglies of it. And we're ready to have a real conversation about this. Either you're interested or you're not, right? And that willingness to put your foot down a little bit goes a long way. I know for me, I'm usually negotiating with people two or three times my age. Often they like to see if I'm a young guy that's airheaded. And when I come back to them with, with nothing but facts, usually after about 10 or 15 minutes of really testing me to see if I'm actually legit, after about 15 minutes of really handling a barrage of tough questions, you're usually going to pass the mustard. And at that point, you get a whole new level of leverage in the negotiation. And in my case, by the end, the seller quite literally told me, well, you know, for the right, for the right group that had the right sourcing of capital, we would be open to seller finance, which basically is the much easier way to finance a deal. And so what happened in my case is it took me about 15 minutes of me taking a ton of questions and basically having to defend my position for the other side to realize, do you know what? I think I'm dealing with somebody that I that I might want to go further with. Okay, hey, let me share a little something with you. You know, hey, by the way, we would be opening, we would be open to financing at least a large part of this deal if we were talking to the right potential buyer. And the fact that he shared that with me, and we've just been talking about buying his asset for the last 40 minutes. You know, it's a little innuendo, but come on, if you can't read that, you're not going to be able to read much in a negotiation because it is all about reading the, the things that are being said behind the words themselves, right? There's connotation and denotation. Denotation is the definition of the word or the phrase that's being communicated. Connotation, however, is the meaning behind it. And you want to be listening very closely to the connotation as well as the denotation of the communication from the other side. Right? What did they mean literally and what might they mean figuratively? And take the full context into a framework. Look, in the case of this negotiation I just had, they did not say outright, yes, we will finance 100% of the deal to you, Jason Rogers. No worries. All good. We're going we're gonna to pick up the whole bill. They did not say that. Right? What they did do, however, is they opened the door to exploring a more favorable financing situation for all involved including, of course, myself and our group. So that's the thing is you have to be able to read between the lines and really understand what was being communicated behind the words themselves. Hopefully those tips and ideas help. With that, if you liked the video, thumbs it up. Share your comments below. I want to hear from you. What do you want to hear next? What have you liked? What do you dislike? Talk to me. And if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, then my friend, what are we waiting for? Subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one.